respectfully please remain standing for the opening prayer. We want to pray. The Lord is in his sanctuary. Let everything be silent for him. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. Other nations may be covered by darkness. But you, the nation, Ghana, we are sincerely grateful to you, Dankwa, Adwims of our development, from the north to the south, and from the east to the west. Father, we thank you for this universe. Each one of us is unique and bring God. In much evident through the relationship we share, let today be a memorable day. May our beginning of this ceremony be therefore in the name of God the Father. May we will continue with the proceedings. His Excellency Jose, his outstanding pioneering role in introducing the free senior high school policy was a major criterion for his selection. <laughs> this policy has expanded access to senior high school and paved the wedding lifted off some parents and guardians cannot be overemphasized. Indeed, in the president's own words, and I quote, this intervention will provide increased opportunities for our young people to further their education, pursue their dreams, and ultimately contribute their quota to the development of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, without the slightest shadow of doubt, the free secondary high school policy is one of the boldest, and if I may say so, one of the most momentous decision, social intervention policy ever taken by any leader of this country. And the citation to be read shortly will touch on the many achievements and contributions of the president, which have convinced the university to confer on him our highest honor. Your Excellency, you are on your way to becoming an alumina, alumnus of this university, the University of Competitive Choice. As we do with all alumni, we urge you to remember your alma mater, whatever you will be, and in whatever capacity you will find yourself. And now, with the authority of the governing council of the university, and by the powers, and I repeat, by the powers vested in me as your chancellor, <laughs> I hereby, I, why are you not saying anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Power is you too, I'm enjoying it. I, <laughs> I hereby constitute this assembly into a special congregation of the University of Cape Coast for the award of an honorary degree on a distinguished honorary. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Chancellor. And I thought we should like to do the University of Cape Coast anthem. You can find out on page 28 of the brochure you have, but I'm sure it will be shown on the screen as well.
I now respectfully invite the vice. The President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dodan, members of Council, Pro, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Osabra Marquesi Atta II, Ugama Hene, Nananum, members of diplomatic corps, members of state, ministers of state, members of parliament present, central regional minister, minister of education, former vice chancellors and pro vice chancellors, registrar and registrars of the University of Cape Coast, vice chancellors and registrars of sister universities, provosts of colleges, deans, directors, heads of various academic units and departments, distinguished academics, and members of the Japanese. <laughs> it is my singular honor to add my voice to that of the Chancellor in welcoming you this afternoon to another historic occasion, the occasion of the conferment of Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Leadership, Honoris Causa, on the first gentleman of the land, significantly to the well-being of society is not new. This rich tradition has a long history awarding institutions, but to the scientific, educational, or social development of their societies. Individuals who receive such awards consistent with global best practices, I am happy to agree in educational leadership. Will always win the heart of many people throughout a highly distinguished His Excellency Policy on Teacher Education, Legal, Institutional and Regulatory Reforms, Tertiary Education Reforms, Technical, Vocational Education and Training, TVET Reforms, Public Partnership Initiative, among others. Sir Chancellor, one of the boldest decisions taken by His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado as president was to introduce the free senior high school policy in September 2017. Despite the huge financial implications on the economy and uncertainties shrouding the concept at that time. However, his resilience and inspiring leadership have contributed largely to the realization and continued success of the free senior high school policy. It is instructive to note that over the past four years, more than a million graduates from the junior high schools have benefited from this policy. Payment of school fees is now not a barrier to any child assessing senior high school education in Ghana. The bold and decisive policy which is iconic in the fourth republic of the country is also in fulfillment of goal 4.1 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which states that, and I quote, by 2030, ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable, and quality primary and secondary education, leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes, unquote. This singular feat Sir Chancellor has endeared His Excellency to many across the globe. Many of his contemporaries within the sub-region are now beginning to study Ghana's model with a view of replicating its success. Sir Chancellor, the President's vision for the education of Ghanaian children was challenged when COVID-19 threatened our liberties and transformed our society leading to closure of schools at every level. Through his broader consultations, dialogue with health experts and key education stakeholders, we witnessed the return of students to school and avoided total loss of an academic year. This helped the University of Cape Coast to complete and start a new academic year. During this period, the government supported our university with PPEs, disinfectants, liquid soaps, and fumigated our campus. 
In addition to this gesture, his government has given us financial clearance to recruit more academic staff to support academic, academic work, which we are much grateful. Sir Chancellor, permit me to express our gratitude to His Excellency Nanado Danko Ekufuado for supporting the university's Institute for Educational Planning and Administration, IEPA, to be upgraded into UNESCO Category 2 Institute. This has positioned IEPA as an enviable institution, international institution. Sir Chancellor, since assuming office, as the Vice Chancellor of this university, I presented to Council and the entire university my vision. A vision predicated on a commitment to transform this university into a global entrepreneurial hub of academic excellence. To quote, to reposition UCC as a global hub of creative thinkers, offering demand driven programs integrated with practical entrepreneurial courses and actively translating the product of its innovative research for sustainable development, unquote. And I have some of the documents that shows the strategies of the vision and the policies that we have also developed to um, pursue that vision. Sir Chancellor, the desire to empower UCC graduates to have entrepreneurial competencies is in line with the president's policy initiative on national entrepreneurship and innovation program. This vision, Sir Chancellor, also resonates with the president's vision of expanding access to education. The recipient's visionary and transformational leadership is seen in the, in the introduction of the flagship education policy. In my view, it is not only intended to increase access to education, but also as a tool for social and economic transformation of our dear country. This policy has brought about an increase in enrollment in traditional institutions, and also as a result, the government's assiduousness in, expanding, in, the, in the expansion of facilities to accommodate the growing population. A ripple effect of this expansion is the demand for educationists to facilitate academic development of students. Ladies and gentlemen, educationists and students need a serene academic environment to ensure effective teaching and learning. In line with my vision to green UCC, which dovetails into Ghana, into Green Ghana's projects, Sir Chancellor, the university has liaised with the Forestry Commission to plant over 50,000 economic trees on the land on our land. This, the green projects will help to prevent our land from being encroached. And here, it is a program that we all need to fight to preserve the university lands. Sir Chancellor, let me draw our attention to the fact that the University of Cape Coast mandate in the collective wisdom of its funders in the 1960s was to champion the training of the country's teaching workforce. Although with the passage of time and the response to global trends, we have expanded our programs to accommodate other disciplines. We are still committed to our traditional core of teaching, research, and providing academic leadership within educational landscape. Sir Chancellor, by the conferment of this degree on His Excellency, the President, he becomes an alumnus of the University of Cape Coast and the second alumnus to occupy the high office of President of Ghana, the first being President John Ejipunkufu. Other past honorary recipients from our university include Professor Jane Nana Opoku Adiman, Professor Kwesi Boche, Professor Patrick Luj Itienu Lumumba, Professor Kila Pasoya, His Excellency Benjamin William Mkapa, former President of Tanzania, Tobo Mbeki, former President of South Africa, His Grace, the Most Reverend Peter Kwesi Sapo.
on, among others. Regrettably, a lot more qualified applicants could not be admitted this year due to academic, this year due to some infrastructure challenges. The statistics on UCC undergraduate admission for the 2020-2021 academic year shows that out of 20,574 qualified applicants, only 8,782, representing 42.7%, were enrolled, leaving a difference of 11,792, representing 57.3%. Sir Chancellor, in all, only about 25% of our regular students are accommodated on campus, while the remaining 75% are housed outside the university campus under very deplorable conditions. As part of the Investor of Cape Coast contribution to the realization of the President's vision in expanding infrastructure, the university has in its small way started thinking along certain strategic directions. In January this year, Sir Chancellor, I set up a committee charge and charge the members with the following terms of reference. One, to develop a roadmap for the construction of 5,500 students' residential facility. To identify sources of funding for the construction of the facility and to make recommendations for the siting of this facility. The committee submitted its report including architectural drawings and bills of quantities which the Governing Council of the University of Cape Coast has approved. This project is of great necessity if we can continue to create access for the teaming graduates from the free SHS program. Although we are making access to some of them through the distance education mode. Sir Chancellor, recognizing the fact that His Excellency, the President, will soon become an alum alumnus of the University of Cape Coast, I, on behalf of management and students, wish to appeal to him to adopt the 5,500 5, students' residential facility as a special project to be built in his honor. Here in the University of Cape Coast, some halls of residence are named after great men like Casey Hayford, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Therefore, a new hall to be named after a great and illustrious son of Ghana, His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado, will, will be appreciated. In conclusion, Sir Chancellor, permit me to congratulate the President once again for this feat he has attained. It is my prayer that as His Excellency leads Ghana beyond aid, he will always remember his alma mater, the University of Cape Coast. Long live Ghana, long live UCC. God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. Thank you for your attention. I thought we should hear it louder than that. And so at this point, we will have a spot of music by Dr. Patrick Adakwe. Dr. Patrick Adakwe is a classical art musician who is also an excellent keyboardist, singer, composer, arranger, choral director, and conductor. He is an alumnus of the University of Cape Coast, having obtained a PhD in music theory and composition. Dr. Adakwe. Thank you. Your Excellency, Nana Dudankwa Akufuado. My daddy, I always call you daddy because you've been my daddy, my everything. And it's always a privilege and an honor to perform music for you. 
In fact, um, there is one thing that I've learned from you which has really helped me in my career. That is patience. You really waited upon the Lord and the Lord renewed your strength. And it's the same grace and mercy that will take you to the next day. Amen. I therefore present to you they that wait upon the Lord. Thank you very much, Dr. Adakui. And so now, the climax of this afternoon's ceremony, the reason we are here, conferment of an honorary degree on His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. And it will take this form. We first will read the citation, then he will be robed by the chancellor, the chairman, of council, assisted by the vice chancellor. There will be a fanfare, and then some appellation. And so, Mrs. Prisla Vansa, you read the citation. 
Thank you very much, Registrar. So the President will be seated. Citation in honor of His Excellency, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, Exemplary Leader, Legal Luminary, Human Rights Advocate, Visionary Politician, Seasoned Diplomat, Distinguished Statesman, Leader for Educational Development, Patriot, Role Model. You were born on 29th March 1944 in Swalaba, Accra, to Mr. Edward Akufuado and Mrs. Adeline Sylvia Eugenia Ama Yebuekia Akufuado, both of blessed memory. You had your primary education at the Government Boys School and later Row Road School, both in Accra Central, after which you went to England to study for your O and A level examinations. You returned to Ghana in 1962 to teach at the Accra Academy before going to the University of Ghana in 1964 to read economics. After graduating as an economist, you went on to read law in the United Kingdom and you were called to the English Bar Middle Temple in July 1971 and to the Ghana Bar in 1975. As a lawyer, you practiced in France for five years with Couder Brothers Law Firm. You also took the opportunity of the exposure to international legal practice in France to study French, a welcome venture that positioned you above your colleagues in your diplomatic engagements. In 1975, you returned home to Ghana to join the chambers of U.V. Campbell from 1975 to 1979. Like the doyen of Gold Coast politics, J.B. Dankwa, and others before you, you used your law practice to champion human rights, rule of law, justice, freedom, and democracy. You offered free legal assistance to the poor and fought for the rights and liberties of the Ghanaian people. Indeed, many of the important constitutional cases of the modern era, which inter alia protected the independence of the judiciary and the right of equal access of all political parties to the state-owned media were undertaken by you. As Attorney General, you were responsible for the repeal of the criminal libel law to enable the Ghanaian media to become one of the most vibrant in Africa. Again, under your chairmanship of the Legal Sector Reform Committee, you initiated the implementation of the court automation program. In your political career, you have served on many international bodies. As foreign minister, you were fully involved in the successful economic community of West African states, ECOWAS peace efforts in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ivory Coast, and the Guinea-Bissau, and were chairman of the ECOWAS Mediation and Security Council in 2003. It is therefore prudent that you have been elected to the chair of the ECOWAS since September 2020. In 2004, when Ghana was elected one of the 15 pioneer members of the African Union Peace and Security Council, a mandate that was renewed at the AU summit in Khartoum in January 2006, you were chosen by your peers on the AU Executive Council to chair the ministerial committee of 15 that fashioned the Ezolwini Consensus, which defined the African Union's common position on UN reforms. You also negotiated for the 2007 AU Summit to be held in Accra as part of Ghana's Golden Jubilee celebrations and chaired the AU Executive Council in 2007. In 2014, you served as chair of the Commonwealth Observer Mission for the South African elections. On the United Nations front, you chaired the meeting of the Security Council which took major decisions to halt incursions in the Middle East in August 2006. Your sterling service at the United Nations led to Ghana's election to the Human Rights Council with the highest number of votes. 183 out of 191. And as a pioneer member of the UN Peace Building Commission, you made an indelible imprint 
on the International Democratic Governance Platform. As the President of the Republic, you had the zeal to make education accessible to all Ghanaians. You championed many educational policies. These include reforms in teacher education, pre-tertiary curriculum, tertiary education, technical vocational education and training, TVET, basic education decentralization, information communication technology in education, and reforms in secondary education. You also encouraged reforms in operationalization of pre-tertiary teacher professional and management development framework, introduction of a new school supervision and inspection system, the Ghana Partnership School, and the legal, institutional, and regulatory policy. In addition, you championed your vision to make the free senior high school education policy a reality. Though you conceived this as a campaign message, you did not forget your promise to Ghanaians, but provided the impetus and resources to initiate and implement the policy within your first year in office as president. You were guided by the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which hinges on accessible, equal, and quality education for all. You have proven to be a firm believer of the notion that Africa must systematically invest in its youth for its development. With a free SHS policy, you have positioned Ghana to grow an educated youth population for the future and for the good of the country. Again, you supported our university, the University of Cape Coast, to upgrade the Institute for Educational Planning and Administration, IEPA, into a UNESCO Category 2 Institute. We are grateful to you for this enviable international positioning of IEPA. You have made a great impact in the educational sector of our, our nation. Your Excellency, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, exemplary leader, legal luminary, human rights advocate, visionary politician, seasoned diplomat, distinguished statesman, leader for educational development, patriot and role model. The University of Cape Coast recognizes and salutes you for your resourcefulness, educational leadership, and meritorious service to the nation, Africa, and the world. In honoring you today, the university appreciates your efforts to promote equal access to quality education for all Ghanaians and your dedicated service to humanity. Illustrious son of Africa, please step forward to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Leadership, Honoris Corsa.
It's it should be on the left. The castle on the left. On the left. The castle on the left. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank And this is the citation that has been put on this. For and then there is also a special gift for him from the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, which is coming. Now, the appellation. The appellation is by Nana Ode Ampofu, I believe. We've all seen him on TV before. Gana Mampenyin Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufu Ado Esiapong so refu Yura Sam Juna Afe Nananum Ahimfu Yede Akoto Kuru Egu or Dabonguma Suevi Na Yede Tekre Maribetu Abujim na ye de akoran episo mi se mereko enum na mi shia mrante enum a wososom prete enum e bi bi se won so wore kwen woso wore kwen enum na nsan wo bedu enum o abono enum na msan bi se won se den na mo rekoye wo enum bra wabono enum and was what a quatu or nunum ne a posa at an ekan can say O Mampenin a cufuado or yem pit pin and patter up and a quaqua nichiri bidi nichiri bidi and pon cry a boy for Cocunuro or Bushi, a juma and a media to Pradan Quang or your sibbing soon contumra on your name been so owning quangma, Nan Quang a dam quang surdo a dofu pee, see a chin nebre and pon cock a see a wild do for chisans and quis and quis are quentin fee. Yaku Emma Nate was so ma yachi, some coffer free education mra, or by no se muye do 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 into and to man farma, or so ma say do, some coffer free education mra, or no so quire, or by what's a wenya jepim into and to man farma, or so ma nana ado danqua, a kufia do kukudrufu and sin suman, san wahama, or the nansa coffer free sh as a ba, amagana man more piafu. And you are can 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 taman to can to kwa kwa duye diamkonu ya bankan kam kakari kukuru kwa yen kari niye unso wa batakari. 
aye saha ye se bu ya memu e ma ankrofu hu a wo se jama adodan kwa de magic ne bu oman na nso anya magic e ya dwene ni nyansa nkuto nyansa nkuto nyansa nkuto yu ntama hama ene mama na aye hama ma ye hu o mama nenso enya de a abua okor betumi de ne hu atoto anoma kore bresi am ho anoma kore bresi am a otua wonsam abojabum aba o hu mfa so adua san kron a wukibia wudibi nana ado dan kwa ekufu ado u ba bi ye beta se onyina u ba bi ye fosra fosra se anya u ba bi ye twan se dote u ba bi nso wo te se okanto na o be bi nsu bubu se akaka pepe akaka pepe akaka pepe achim ekuropon kwakwaduam abudani anwa kotoko ekufu ado kokodrufu ne achim mansa kotoku echno wo fere ne mirikisi okuntunkrunku oduro asafo nananu ma musu niema wo fere ne chebiri ani chebi kwa bebiri mu hine ne boyache wiawiansa nana ofori tinting okobong tinting de oduko okobong sasere ku dense nananuma wodi atuduru ni adwo chiche won tata tum ampofo okesu ni ama ejeni nananuma mutie buda su jenjia achim ka ubiransa asuna ba ne ho yefe achim kokuroko abrewa do kuya papa bi ya wasi atofo kesi diri fi ochibeng ewie se akufu ado oyo kokuduru fu ampa afe dana ado dan kwa akufu ado wankori akoko no bia ko bone dan achi kokoko wankori kere kum no bi akokum ne kra wanyo twi no bi akotwetwen wani afase na kofa na se ka bi no bi akoka se akufu ado ka manka bi na mum na na ado dan kwa akufu ado edi nkamfo na mum ya no afe kwa pa bra ma me mo pa papa bi ayem papa na mpepa wode nwen papa na me de ye ne papa na ni be so pa papa da mpa opem kwa pa ko twa mpepa wode nwen papa abeye papa bi papa mpepa wode nwen papa ne papa me tumu ne pa anti me ma wa ko twa mpepa wode nwen papa abeye papa bi papa na fi se ana adodan kwa akufu ado ye papa wa ye gana papa pa adodan kwa akufu ado kasa nana ogwa akoton ketwa awotete wombo nganu no wonye won ha osaberi makwasi ata ekuo simpi esare bedi aku nananom se kasa nana kasa nana adodan kwa akufu ado ado awoda dodu munti ya bo mranga yese israel ododo kasa oyiri fi ampa se chidadi bira wo mon keshiri kasa na gana man ritie Central Regional Minister, Minister for Education, Chancellor, Chairperson and members of the Governing Council, Osaber Marquisiata II, Omahini of the Ogwa Traditional Area, Ahuna Bubrim, Prajin Sim VI, Paramount of Cape Coast, and to have the opportunity to make these remarks degree by the special congregation. <laughs> Nelson December 2017, at the end of the first year of my presidency, from the University of Liberia, the fourth oldest institution of higher education in Africa. This, the third, is the first from an institution in my own country. which makes it understandably very special for me. I thank very much the Chancellor, Chairperson and members of the Governing Council, Vice-Chancellor, members of Convocation and Registrar for taking this decision. And I assure all of you 
that I'll do my very best to uphold the highest standards associated with this award. <laughs> Chancellor, there are a lot of things for which Cape Coast, the location of this university, has become synonymous. It was once the administrative capital of the then the Philip Kweku School, 1836. And it is the home of the first boys' secondary school in Fansipim School, established 40 years later in 1876. I doubt if there exists anywhere else in the world a town that has the same congregation of top secondary schools as there are in Cape Coast which initiated the first phase of our struggle for national independence. The society was formed to resist the application and implementation of the 1897 Crown Lands Bill, which sought to sequestrate and expropriate our lands to the benefit of the British Crown. The society mobilized the chiefs and people and public opinion in the Gold Coast to agitate against this pernicious legislation. Their agitation forced the colonial power to withdraw the bill, and the indigenous ownership of our lands was never an issue again during the rest of the colonial period. We continue to possess our lands freely because of the bravery and foresight of the members of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, and we must continually pay homage to these patriots. They spared us the fate that continues to bedevil the lives of our brothers and sisters in Southern and Eastern Africa, who suffered at the same time the fate of colonial expropriation of their lands. Indeed, the most prominent of these noble patriots were the three gentlemen from Cape Coast. Jacob Say, described as the first recorded indigenous multimillionaire in the Gold Coast, who founded the society and became its founding president, and was the forerunner of George Alfred Parr Grant, another successful merchant prince, who 50 years later to the day funded the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC of Blessed Memory, which initiated the second phase of our struggle for freedom. Joseph Casely Hayford, the future author of Ethiopia Unbound, a pioneer of the Pan-African movement and one of the founders of the British West African National Congress, which sought to unite the colonial peoples of British West Africa in their demand for freedom. And John Mensah Saba, the first Ghanaian lawyer and principal advocate of the society's cause. Their names are boldly etched in the annals of our nation's struggle for freedom and stand as perpetual inspirations of patriotic endeavor. I'm delighted that this university, established in this famous town to advance the cause of education and excellence in our country, is the first Ghanaian university to accord me this honor, even though I do not have the accolade of being its alumnus. <laughs> this accolade has been conferred on me because of the introduction and acceptance of the free SHS policy promoted by my government, which has expanded dramatically access to ed ed education, enabling hundreds of thousands of young men and women from all corners of our country to go to senior high school. The policy has reversed decades of exclusion, which denied on the average 100,000 young men and women annually entry to senior high school education because of the poverty of their parents. The policy has meant that our nation can now begin to reap the fruits of the talents of all its young people, as has been spectacularly demonstrated by the outstanding results of the first graduates of the policy 
in the most recent WASI examinations. Of the 465 who obtained eight A's in the exams, the Akufuado graduates from Ghana, as they have become known, were responsible for 411 of them. Not only has access been widened, but quality has also been maintained, indeed, even enhanced. Government is also ensuring that access to tertiary education is expanded through the removal of the Garanta requirement that makes it difficult for some students to apply for loans through the Student Loan Trust Fund Scheme. This process of expansion of educational opportunities has to be the bedrock of educational policy in the 21st century for our nation. If we are to make the rapid transformation of our social and economic lives, we all seek. Through this award, I've been added to the thousands of alumni of the University of Cape Coast who are contributing their quota in various fields to the development of our country, including some of the most hardworking members of my government. And our performance will be a reflection on the university. I pray that both UCC and I keep up the mutual confidence in each other and live up to our expectations. Chancellor, I've been in the eyes of the public for most of my adult life and spent many years campaigning to be elected president of our republic. The first foray I made into national politics was in the 1970s, the mid-1970s, during the Kutua Champong regime, and it was to join in the fight for an end to military rule and the restoration of constitutional democracy in Ghana. I had by this time firmly made up my mind what I felt would be the best way to govern our country, to ensure that we would achieve the free, just, prosperous, and united nation that our forefathers envisaged in starting the fight for the independence of Ghana. My credo could be easily summarized as a belief in constitutional government based on freedom of association, freedom of speech, freedom of the media, the separation of powers with an independent judiciary, the rule of law, a strong and dynamic parliament, and a private sector that unleashes the energies of the people to prosper. By the time I was elected president, I think that I established my credentials as a champion for individual freedom and press freedom in particular. So what do I make of the current accusations that are being made that freedoms are under attack under the Kufuado government? I do not claim to have been a lone knight in shining armor, but it is fair to say we went through many battles together to get where we are today in the media sphere in our country. We did not wake up suddenly one morning to find ourselves with over 400 different radio stations and dozens of television channels instead of one radio station and one television station, both owned by the state and under the firm and unrelenting control of government. The criminal libel law, which had been part of our legal architecture for decades, did not just suddenly disappear from our laws. I have been a part and sometimes led the struggle for individual rights and freedom of the press in this country. I believe in it. It is part of my makeup. And when it comes to the freedom of the press, I am certain I have nothing to apologize for with reference to anything I have ever done or said. In the 2007 campaign to become the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, we use the slogan, to wit, we have known you from long ago. Chancellor, we must know what we are buying when we go to the shop. When we cast our ballots for someone, 
we must know what that person stands for. If we vote for Akufuado, the human rights campaigner, to become president of our country, we have a right to expect that backed by the Constitution and the presidential oath, we would have a human rights respecter, President Akufu Addo. I did not imagine that the reputation I had brought to the job would be enough to carry through a freedom and rights protection agenda. Right from the beginning of my term in office, therefore, I tried to strengthen the institutions that would give meaning to the protection of our freedom. More infrastructural development funds have been allocated to the judiciary in the past four years than we have ever seen, and it has gone along with human resource development. Budgetary allocations to the police service, SRAJ, NCCE, and Parliament have all been increased significantly and deliberately to boost up the capacities of these institutions. The Right to Information Act has been passed under my presidency and is now in operation despite successive governments shying away from it. That is how rights and freedoms are best protected. Since becoming president, there's nothing I have seen or experienced in the office that would make me change my long-held views on the importance of fundamental human rights. I had worked with civil society organizations and used their platforms to engage in famous arguments. Indeed, I still enjoy a healthy debate, and I'm not averse to the occasional controversy that is a necessary part of public life. I do not forget that I made a living practicing as a lawyer and going to court, which means that I know I would lose some arguments. I appreciate well-argued opinions and challenge the status, that challenge the status quo. I need no lessons in the importance of a vigorous media in building a healthy democracy. I have said so, and I will say it again, that I would much rather we had a reckless press than a supine one. And I dare say that the atmosphere in our country is one of spirited conversation and debate among politicians, the business community, civil society organizations, and ordinary citizens. Through print, radio, television, or in particular, social media, whether they are home or abroad. Indeed, I dare say the means to get your voice heard has never been so democratized as now, and long may it last. Having said that, I must also acknowledge that as our elders say, it is the person wearing the shoes that is able to say exactly where it pinches. Therefore, I should listen when it is suggested that journalists are under attack under my government. It remains a matter of great regret to me that the, the murder of, of Ahmed Swale has still not been resolved. But believe me, this is not for want of commitment on the part of the police. And I couldn't have made it any clearer that government has no interest in covering up whatever might be or whoever might be involved. There is no indication that his death was at the instance of the government. In the end, his murderer will be caught tried and punished. I believe it is in the interest of the state, in the interest of the people of Ghana, and in the interest of government, the journalists are and feel able to go about their work in safety. And I'll continue to do all I can to make this a reality of Ghana. In my political career over the years, I've been at the receiving end of much vitriol and deliberate falsehood thrown at me to cause maximum damage to my reputation and my political prospects. I know what it is like to be unable to protect members of your family from the mud aimed at you 
but which splashes on them as well. I'm not alone in this. And there are unfortunately several journalists that have been willing to lend themselves to the destruction of people's reputations and livelihoods without just cause. Not all journalists are upright citizens, just as politicians, painters, and farmers are not all upright citizens. But I do expect our institutions to deal fairly and equitably with all citizens according to the dictates of the law when people go wrong. Let me end by addressing a particular line of the current argument being made about the threat to rights and freedoms. I believe this has led to a new definition of a culture of silence. It goes along the line. It goes along the line that when people in government and all government policies are criticized and there is a defense of the people of policies, it is intimidatory and leads to a culture of silence. A radio station is currently running a campaign against free SHS. During the last election, I got the clear impression free SHS had been endorsed by all political parties and all we needed to do was to keep improving it. Would a spirited defense of the free SHS policy constitute an attack on press freedom? I wonder. It cannot be that everyone has a right of reply except members of the government and officialdom. Nor can it be that challenging an opinion expressed by a journalist constitutes an attack on press freedom. What I believe may be sorely lacking in our society today is the need to listen to each other more. Knowledge has never been a gift granted exclusively to one group. We must listen and hear each other more. And for me personally, I find it ironic that the presidency of a man who has been and continues to be daily the most vilified political figure of his generation can be accused of presiding over a culture of silence. There's no midnight knock on the door in Ghana for authors of dissenting views, nor will there be during my presidency. Indeed, one of the reasons assigned by the global social media platform Twitter for its decision to establish its operational headquarters in Africa in Ghana was that, and I quote, Ghana is a supporter of free speech online freedom, and the open internet, unquote. These qualities possessed by our nation also influenced the decision by the Federation of African Journalists to announce the holding of its annual conference in Ghana this year because of Ghana's attachment to a culture and practice of free media. Chancellor, there's also been talk about a state of insecurity prevailing in the country, following reports by some sections of the media. A cursory glance at the statistics from the police service shows that on the contrary, crime cases, at least for the first quarter of 2021, are coming down as compared to the same quarter in 2020. For example, there was a nationwide reduction in robbery cases from 525 during the period under review in 2020 to 495 in 2021 and still declining. Inasmuch as a marked re reduction in the levels of crime would be preferable, government is determined to work with the police service to guarantee the security of persons and protect lives and property in accordance with the rule of law. That is why in addition to increasing substantially the numerical strength of the police service, government has since 2017 procured some 735 additional vehicles, including 15 operational buses, a feat unprecedented in the history of the service. It must be put on record that, that when I, before I came to office in 2017, 
the police service has a total of 492 serviceable vehicles. 320 housing units are being constructed in National Police Training School to reduce the accommodation deficits of the service. Modern communication equipment and fragmentation jackets have been procured and delivered to the service to protect officers and ensure effective policing. The construction of hangars at the police depot in Accra for four helicopters already procured for the Ghana Police Service is 99% complete. An air wing unit has been established by the Ghana Police and six pilots have been trained and passed out to man the wing. A new K-9 unit has been established with 30 dogs and 30 police officers. The Criminal Investigations Department has been equipped with a digital forensic laboratory and for the first time in the history of the department, crime officers are given a monthly allowance to support their investigation. We are retooling the CID Forensic Science Laboratory. The CID building has also now become disability friendly, and there is continuous training of CID officers. Government is determined to give whatever support is required to ensure that we have a police service that the people of Ghana deserve. Tesla. I belong with pride to the Dankwa Domo Buzia political tradition, one whose forebears, at great personal sacrifice, fought for the democratic, open, free system of government we are enjoying today in Ghana. They propagated the concept of democracy at a time when it was not in Africa a fashionable concept. Indeed, the philosophy of the new patriotic party coincides with that of the Fourth Republican Constitution. It is the dominant political philosophy in the world today and has stood the test of time. We in the MPP view civil liberties and human rights as conducive to economic growth and intrinsic to the objective of development. We believe in empowering the individual to use his or her entrepreneurial initiative to create legitimate wealth and to enjoy security of person and private property. We believe that through freedom, we can encourage upward mobility for everyone in society. Hence the insistence of the great man of our tradition, Joseph Wachi Dankwa, that the purpose of governmental action should be to enhance, quote, the life, liberty, and property of each and every citizen, unquote. The most important property that society can bequeath to its citizens is intellectual property. As Africa's 20th century history has shown, a nation may be endowed with all the riches of nature, gold, diamond, bauxite, oil, platinum, timber, manganese, and uranium, and still remain poor. The most important resource that we have to prioritize in building is the human resource, the mind. The reason why, despite the doubts expressed by the naysayers, free SHS has been instituted and has been accepted by the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians. That is the path to fulfilling the dreams and aspirations of our forebears, who envisage us to be a united, free, progressive, and prosperous nation, the Black Star of Africa. The Ghanaian people have long been in the forefront of the determination of the African peoples to live lives of freedom and dignity. It led us to being the first nation in sub-Saharan Africa to gain our freedom from colonial rule. It is today directing our efforts at social and economic transformation on the basis of democratic values and institutions, a feat that is rare, if not novel, in human history. We are trying to use the instruments of democracy to transform societies from poverty to prosperity. History tells us 
that all previous successful efforts in this direction have been made either by authoritarian regimes or by democracies with limited franchises. We are making the effort on the basis of full universal adult suffrage in a free and open society. I am proud to be part of this exceptional history. <clears throat> Chancellor, I have taken longer than I should in making what would normally be a short acceptance speech for the honor done me by this university. But I do not think there could have been a better opportunity to make these points than in the academic atmosphere you have presented to me today. I pray that as more and more of our young people get access to senior high and tertiary education, there will be more room for honest and healthy debate in our society. The better educated our citizens are, the richer the content of our public discourse, and the more productive political, social, and economic decision making. Chancellor, I thank you for the honor you have bestowed on me today. I shall carry it with pride and I will do my utmost to execute the mandate the Vice-Chancellor has charged me with to complete the 500-room hall. <laughs> may God bless the University of Cape Coast and us all, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you all for your attention. Just, just in case it escaped us, that was an address by the newest graduate of the University of Cape Coast. His Excellency, Dr. Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, President of the Republic of Ghana. And so at this point, we invite Dr. Adakwe to give us a spot of music before we invite the chancellor to dissolve the congregation. Yes, um, I've been tasked to do the president's favorite song, Oye. And of course, in Ghana, there's no way we sing a popular song, especially when it's danceable, where the audience sits. So if you want to dance along, feel free and dance with me. Et
You just had a, a balanced, fair, and objective speech from the latest UCC alumnus in town. Our President, His Excellency, Dr. 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 Nanado Dankwa Akufuadro the Chairman of the University Governing Council, our Minister of Education, Ministers of State, members of the University Council, Osar Berima Kwesiata II, Omaihina of Ugoa Traditional Area, Ehum Abubrim, Nana Prajin Sim the Sest, Omaihina of Ewerenchi Traditional Area, members of Parliament, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Vice Chancellor of the University, please, all other protocol observed. It gives me it gives it pleasure on behalf of the Governing Council of the University to express my appreciation to all of you for honoring our invitation to attend the special congregation of the University of Cape Coast for the conferment of the Doctor of Philosophy in Education and Leadership, honoris causa degree, on our president, the President of the Republic. I wish you all a safe journey back to your respective destinations and now the power is vested in me as your chancellor. I declare this special congregation of the university dissolved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chancellor. We will have a closing prayer before the national anthem. But before then, uh, just one or two announcements. There will be the commissioning of the Emmanuel Adu Obin Building, which houses the central administration of the university after this ceremony. So as many of you as can make it are invited. There will also be a reception for our invited guests at the lodge of the vice chancellor. Uh, I believe you will be directed to the place. Um, may I now invite Reverend Professor Philip Bosson to give us the closing prayer. May I humbly ask us uh, to rise for the closing prayer. We want to pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we sincerely express our gratitude to you once more. At the commencement of this function, we invited you to take your place and guide us to a successful end. By your graciousness, you have done this. Glory be to your name. Good and loving Father, we thank you for taking us through the program of conferring an honorary doctorate degree, honoris causa, on our president, His Excellency Dr. Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, your servant, whom you have chosen to lead this nation to develop. We are grateful to you for the guidance and love we shared in the ceremony. Please bless and guide our president as he holds his honorary degree. May he step in further greatness from here. Let him shine wherever he goes. Lord, you have never made certificates from this university useless, and thus we are sure 
that he will lead the, this nation to further glory and honor. Please bless and guide him as he charts new beginnings for himself and the nation. Father, I pray your blessings for our guests as they depart from this, for their destinations. Grant them the grace of a peaceful journey. Though they are leaving our campus, we know that they will always continue to be with us as part of the University of Cape Coast family. And so we ask that the bonds that we have shared and created this morning will remain with us forever. Finally, may the Almighty Father bless you all. 